You are not prepared. You are not prepared! Welcome back to Warcraft Resurrected. This is Chris. And this is Brandon. And we're bringing you another awesome episode. First thing we're going to talk about is what we've been doing in game. I haven't been doing much. Because <laughs> my son's been a team all the stuff and it's practically, I come home from work, I rest for just a little bit, then I gotta go get him, go to practice. And so, like, almost every day, uh, the last two weeks, I've been going there. So, yeah, I haven't really had much time to play. I got, I've got, been getting on and leveling and questing a little bit, but not much. I got, I got to 64. And that's about all I've really done. Uh, it's <clears throat> kind of the same for me. I've got... Oh, you're son and T-Ball, too? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. We have a... Uh, I have a new grandson, so... Um, I've been spending a lot of time oh, over there with them. Yeah, that's right. And then... Let's see... Uh, my oldest son's birthday was last weekend. I have a concert to go to this weekend. And my, da my daughter's birthday is the weekend of the 4th. So these three weekends have been kind of busy. When I do get to get on, though, I, I jump on and play uh, a little bit here or there, depending on what character I want to play, my, my Warlock or my Druid. Uh, both of them are 65. I've been working on some tailoring with my Warlock, just uh, in off time and downtime working it up. I think I'm at Silk or something like that right now. <clears throat> so just kind of working on it a little bit here and there and questing with her when I can. And then... Um, Mainly doing Dungeons of Savage because it's really hard to quest as a as a healing character. So I'm kind of stuck. Um, if I want to stay heals, if I want to go tank, I really want to just stay heals and not switch back and forth. So that's that's pretty much what I've been doing. Um, just dungeoning. If anybody wants to join me, they're more than welcome. <laughs> yep. I did run Manitou's the other day <clears throat> with uh, Brandon. And let me tell you, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. We did it. Check. We did it. Yeah, it's just the first oh, boss is a gear check. Other than the first boss, high. it's a pretty simple dungeon. Yeah. So, I've ran it a couple of times now. So, I know I need better gear, but I know we could do it. But, uh, we had... Was it just... Was it one person or two, pe two people? That uh, said I wouldn't run it quick enough, they left. <laughs> but we got a couple other people in there, they didn't care, so thank goodness. Yeah. It's... Because a lot of people are geared now until they're just <clears throat> running through it. And I'm not geared enough to do all that, so. Yeah, the group I had today was doing that. I, I mean, they were just, they were literally, it was all melee. Uh, two warriors and two rogues. And I was healing and it was just dumb. I mean, they were doing so much damage so fast that we never stopped. It was it was just uh, it was wild. I stayed about two thousand men of the entire fight. I drank I drank when I could. That's about how it was. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we'll go to some news. Midsummer Fire Festival and Spirit of Competition are coming July twentieth. So. They did delay the Midsummer Fire Festival to the 20th. And the Spirit of Competition event is also returning to coincide with the Summer Olympics. And uh, I do remember getting the Spirit of Competition back in the day. Still got it. It's in my pet inventory, or whatever you want to call it. Alright, well I was thinking it was June. I don't know why. I even read it as July. So, you got a month. But the... Uh, Spirit of Competition event rewards a pet and a tavern. 
but yeah, the tavern looks pretty nice. I like the tavern. Yeah, I wore the tavern for a while, then I don't think I've looked at it again since then. But to get to tavern, all you gotta do is uh, go to a battleground. Win or lose, just stay during the whole battle, and they'll mail you a competitor tavern. But to get the pet, which is called Spirit of Competition, you have to win, and it'll be mailed to you. Or no, wait a minute. There's no, a chance. There's a chance, yeah. That a gold medallion will be mailed to you, which is the spirit of competition. Okay. All right, so we'll go to to your news. All right, well, I'll go with some of the older news first, just because uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure people already know about it, but it's a, a good reminder. There was, I want to say about 11 days ago, there were several, but not all, of the prop paladins were experiencing threat problems. And that just as had continued. Well, they did a uh, they did a hot fix in it. Because they, they, they affir- confirmed that there were issues in Shattered Halls, you know, when it first came out. And a couple hours later, they did the dungeon again. They didn't have any kind of issues, so there was a bug there. Um, they've been They were working on it, and they did do a hot fix on it, but but the hot fix was on Monday. That was six days ago. There's still an issue ongoing in Black Morass where you generate no threat at all uh, in there with a consecration regardless of dying. So, um, you know, just be aware that right now something's going on with consecration where it's not working properly in Black Morass. And I'm sorry, but for a paladin, if that's not pulling you any threat, you're really no good I mean I don't I know I don't play a paladin but I do know enough about them that I know that concentration plus uh, righteous fury um, does pull quite a bit of threat so that's I mean that was just some of the older news I just kind of wanted to bring up real quick uh, just so you guys know watch out in black morass yeah, now you, you play with uh-huh. a pally tank so yeah you kind of know mm-hmm. yeah that's why I wanted to bring it up because I play with a pally tank so it's, uh, it's good to know. Now, one of the newest things, um, probably about an hour and 15 minutes ago or so, there was some surveys sent out, uh, just random recipients, and it's asking the community for feedback about possibility of classic fresh servers, updates to classic, and a preferred phase cadence after launch. So they did send out a picture. Um, I'll go through a couple of the different pictures and just tell you what it is that they're asking. Like, if the Classic Fresh Start realms were introduced, how likely or unlikely are you to start playing on Classic Fresh Start if the cha- if, if the changes you liked were implemented? Some of the changes they're talking about. Summoning stones at dungeon entrances. Uh, more, diff- more difficult raid bosses and dungeon encounters. Increased debuff limit on raid bosses. Barbershop. Faster XP raids to the level. And no world buffs and raids. Um, there's a couple I want to touch on in there. Like... For instance, summoning stones at dungeon instances. Why are you going to do that to classic? That's not classic then. Then it's becoming TBC. Um, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I understand that you want the classic restart, but if you're going to do a classic restart, then go back to classic. Don't add any of this stuff to it. But no world boasts in raids. Why? I mean, I just, I don't understand it. Um, so I'm not even going to get into it, but that's just one of the things that struck me as odd <clears throat> is them wanting to do summoning stones at dungeon entrances. In some Reddit posts, um, there's some images shared of what the preferred cadence of phases would be for classic fr- uh, fresh servers a similar two year cycle of phases, a 12 month cycle, or a fast paced six month cycle. And there's also kind of a, uh, a survey here for that. <clears throat> it says for for WoW Classic Fresh Start Realms, we are considering accelerating a cadence of new phase release. Let's see here. Of new phase releases and making some changes to allow players to keep up. Which cadence would you prefer most of WoW Classic Fresh Start Realms? So, uh, same WoW Classic cadence as from August of 2019 launch, or you know, uh, 20 to 20, 20 to 21 to 22 months. Accelerated 12 months cadence with new fresh start realms uh, every 12 months. <laughs> wow. Accelerated six month cadence with fresh starts every six months. Or they're giving you another box to specify kind of what you would want. Uh, that right there, that's all on y'all, man. 
Um, if they're going to start re resetting Classic, I won't play it. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do it over again. I played Classic enough. If they're going to delete your Toad and yeah, you then restart, I, then I, I won't. I won't. Yeah, none yeah. of my characters will be over there. Uh, among some of the phase cadences, there's also questioning regarding updates to Classic, such as faster XP rates, no world buffs and raids, higher debuff limit on raid bosses, Black Market Auction House, original 1.5 Alteric Valley, higher difficulty raid bosses, increased item drops, earning gold at faster rates, summoning stones at dungeons, and the barber shop. So, it's like, that's overall how much do you like or dislike the following changes you may potentially see on a classic fresh start. So how much would you like it or dislike it if it was faster XP rates? Me? Mm -hmm. I would strongly like that, because I don't like leveling in classic, but I would take the faster XP rate. Yeah. As far as anything else, I don't want it, because then it's not original WoW. Uh, I don't want to earn gold faster. That was part of original WoW, is to bust your hump to get the gold you needed to make it to, to get your mount. So these are just some things I guess they're looking at. So if, it, if it, Blizzard is exploring these ideas for Classic Fresh, could the possibility of seasons ever become a thing for Classic World of Warcraft? Kind of like what they have, they have in Diablo. You have seasons. Maybe so. May I mean, they're they're trying to keep up with uh, everything else, and they're just going to keep trying to... They're going to keep resurrecting that old ghost, um, as you say, yeah. and they're just going to... They're they ride this they know how to do game. seasons because, you know, they do Diablo. So yeah. they could figure out a way to do seasons here. I think they're riding this horse as long as they can. I think they've yeah. got something in plans, but they're riding this one as long as they oh. can. <laughs> I, just, I just saw, I thought you actually thought of that, but I see where it says could the possibility of seasons every yeah. single thing. I thought you thought of it. <laughs> but, I mean, there could be seasons. Then again, they could make it to where. Um, your characters like go into a, a paradigm and then they then they level uncontrollably and you can like get every spec and I don't know just be everything why don't we just do that I mean if we're going to do everything else and make crazy let's just be able to be every spec <clears throat> be able to go to level 60 and start over at level 1 and go to 60 again and start over at level 1 and go to 60 again you can have all three specs yeah, if they ever do this then the classic era servers are def they're already ghost towns anyways yeah. It's definitely going to be Ghost Town too. Okay. Enough right. about that. Right. Um, it's going to make me mad. Let me go on to my next thing. Alright. Now, uh, upcoming change to Feral Druid Energy and Power Shifting in TBC Classic. A lot of people are saying they kind of uh, miss, they greatly miss the Power Shifting ability on uh, Druids. And so they've been seeing people complaining, talking about it, blah, blah, blah. So they're talking about uh, bringing it into the game. Now, uh, to give you an idea, we're bringing back Wild Classic Feral Druid power shifting by moving Druid energy regeneration to the constant two second slow tick loop. Cat Druids will receive 20 energy every two seconds their energy will never get a partial tick outside of that two second loop and with careful timing they can receive their full 20 energy regeneration tick immediately after shifting so that would be yeah. nice for a druid yeah so they've been discussing the druid energy regeneration for the last couple of weeks they've been seeing the, or they've been doing a great deal of community discussion about it on every channel and platform that read and listen to that they read and listen to and that discussion started almost immediately after they implemented the Burning Crusade Classic power generation change first introduced in patch 2.2.0 and so at that point in the original Burning Crusade the game would grant a partial stick of regeneration whenever any regeneration race changed and it would reset the regeneration clock so the next tick would happen about two seconds later now, while this approves some abilities like evocation, it has the side effect of removing a druid's ability to time their shapeshift into cat form immediately before a regeneration tick to order to quickly receive 20 energy. So, they're talking about bringing it back. Yeah, I think it'll be a good thing because right now cat druids are just not 
um, solid DPS. Do you know any druids? No, I don't know any. Okay. <laughs> so it looks like the whole in, the whole end result looks like his cat druids receiving energy at a more constant rate. They'll be able to optimize their energy better. And they should never receive less than 20 energy in a single region tick. Okay. That looks pretty good. That'll bring some people back. And one thing, the one of the last things I want to talk about is the honor problem in the Burning Crusade class. There's a massive problem for players trying to farm honor through battlegrounds in hopes of purchasing off pieces for season one arena gear. The issue be began to pre uh, present, present itself during the pre-patch event leading up to the Dark Portal opening. Well, that was a nice, well, that night was nice for pre-patch because it was double honor week. It was merely a band-aid on a bigger issue. Core queue times are getting worse and worse every day since Burning Crusade Classic launched. The problem is, Arena is an extremely popular mode for player versus player content, and Burning Crusade is the expansion this game mode was introduced to World of Warcraft. One of the hot button issues for over a decade in World of Warcraft is racial ability balance. Alliance players have Perception, Escape Artist, and Stoneform. Uh, Horde players have Hardiness, which reduces stun effects, Will of the Forsaken, we all know what that is, and Tar and Hitboxes. The Horde racials are generally considered to be much more impactful in PvP situations, as Undead is one of the most popular races, race choices for top performing teams. While this issue isn't only a racial ability issue, it also comes down to the fact that players are required to play with some fa the same faction in Arena. That means when a group of people choose to play one faction, other people that might want to play with those people will also go to that faction, and in the end, everyone has a larger pool of players to play with. Taking a look at the demographics, thanks to Ironforge.pro, which we are not affiliated with or we are not sponsored by, from the final weeks of World of Warcraft Classic versus the first few weeks of Burning Crusade Classic, you can see how the Horde have become even more popular on the North American and PvP realms. Now, this is, this is data from May the 9th of 2021 to May the 16th of 2021 is what it's showing. The demographics, the demographics at, at, from May 9th to uh, May 16th, 47% were Horde, were Alliance, 53% were Horde on all selected realms. And then it breaks down White Main, Fairly, and Herod, Benediction, um, Arugal. It looks like Sulfurus had the most Horde with 59%. No, Herod had 67% Horde. So, and then the other ones are kind of almost split evenly. Now, the Burning Crusade Classic demographics, which are June 9th of 2021 to June, or to June, tw uh, June 16th, which is just a month later after it came out, all realms are now 61% Horde and 39% Alliance. Which means now you have a lot of Horde, not so much Alliance, which means the, the queues are getting longer for Horde. <coughs> because there's not enough Alliance to play. If, for instance, Herod, it went from being 67% Horde to 73% Horde. Um, Sulfurus went from being 59 to 67%. And Horde outweigh them on everything except Benediction. And Benediction is 51% Alliance, 49% Horde. And these are on PvP already, PvP rooms. So you see, with Burning Crusade, it brought the arenas out, but it also made people choose to go to the other side. And as the demographic shows, Horde made up 50%, 53% of the population at the tail end of World of Warcraft Classic. And now... They make up 61% in Burning Crusade class. This is inevitably causes a major issue when it comes to queuing for Battleground, which is always a, an Alliance versus Horde PvP activity. With the lopsided populations, Horde Battleground queues get longer and longer. This isn't only a problem for the Horde, because as the queue timers get longer, Horde players look for opportunities to farm honor elsewhere on PvP realms. That means they go out in the world and kill lower level players, trying to innocently quest in each zone in the outlet. Which I hate, that's why I don't play PvP. Yeah. In fact, you can get more honor from killing low level players in Sanger Marsh in 45 minute queues than you can get with the entire Battlegrounds worth of honor. 
it's, it's not a healthy experience for Horde or Alliance players either one. Because it says here, there's another picture that shows you're in queue for Eye of the Storm. Average wait time, 45 minutes. Time in queue, 8 seconds. You're in queue for Arathi Basin. Average wait time, an hour and 6 minutes. You're in queue for Alteric Valley. Average wait time, an hour and 9 minutes. So 45 minutes was the shortest time. As you can expect, players aren't happy in how things that have evolved in Burning Crusade Classic, and there are even prominent community figures that aren't even going to play Arena at all because of how long the grind is to farm honor for work players. Um, I don't know if you guys know any of these people. Uh, Super Tease is one of them. Stoops. Uh, that's just to name a few that I've seen play. But there's also player-created player, player issues. Some players think that the honor problem isn't something that needs to be fixed at all because it's a player-created issue. If Horde don't want long queue times, just reroll Alliance. It's not that easy. While this is one way to look at the problem, the same can be said about world buffs in the World of Warcraft Classic. This was a, play, a player created issue as well, where players were so invested in doing as much damage as possible that logging out with world buffs was the norm to save them for the raid night. If world buffs are an issue, just raid without them. I've been saying that the whole time. Thankfully, Blaze and Blizzard didn't see it that way, and they created a unique solution to the problem with the Chrono Boom Displacer. Yeah. And it, it was late, but they made it. So, it says here, but, you know, but this, and, and I agree, this isn't original Burning Crusade. And the idea of classic staying true to the original Burning Crusade is officially dead. The game and the community is just too different. We got 58, we got level 58 character boost, store mounts, and the chrono boom displacer. On top of all that, and what I say at the very beginning, I didn't think any of this was a good idea. I've been saying that the whole time. You can go back and listen to my podcast, the podcast guy. I've been saying this all along that I didn't like this at all. I've been I've been with Asmongold 100% that I think this completely destroyed it. But on top of all that, Blizzard is aware of how different the community is in 2021 versus 2007, which is exactly why they chose to give Seal of Blood to Alliance players when it was a Horde-only ability in the original Burning Crusade. There are just so many things that separate Classic from original Burning Crusade that the entire arguments to stay true can basically be thrown out the window, is what I've said. Potential solutions, you could go Merc Mode. It's a system Blizzard inter introduced in, the, I think, they say Warlords of Draenor, allowing players to participate in Battlegrounds as the opposite faction. This is the most recommended fix for the community to help alleviate the queue time issues hordes are facing. While it isn't quite as elegant of a solution as the Chrono Boom Displacer, it is st it, what is stopping Blizzard from new introducing another brand new item on Chromie that could essentially do the same thing. The honor problem in Burning Crusade, to just, just sum it up, is also a player, to me it's all, and in here even, I've, I've been looking at it, it's a player created issue, and the community is wanting Blizzard to do something about it. Is it a bad thing for both Alliance and Horde players? And there is a precedent that Blizzard fixing player created issues by introducing brand new items on Chromium. We, we can all just hope that if Blizzard ever does address the issue or come up with a solution, it won't take until the Sunwell patch for it to come out. Uh, man, I, I don't know what to tell you. I like playing Alliance. Uh, Horde, I don't, I, I know Horde get the better racials. I, I, I like, I agree with that. But, um, as a gnome, you get escape artist, and that's fine for me. Uh, you get stone form as a, as a racial for a, uh, for a dwarf, and that's a great one. I mean, yeah, you get Will of the Forsaken, which you're immune to charm and fear and all that. While it's active, but that's, it's still got a two-minute cooldown. Tarn hitboxes, they are smaller. And yeah. hardiness. <laughs> huh? Yeah, they are a little bit yeah. smaller. <laughs> yep, and in hardiness, you get a chance to resist stun effects. Uh, it's it's increased by 15%. Yeah, the, see, the Horde have better racials, but that just means you have to play harder on your last tune. And that's kind of what but, I like. you got to play your character better. Exactly, but to counteract the hardiness... If you have a human rogue that's using maces, it counteracts that fifteen percent because they get a mace. Uh, they get a mace upgrade, plus they get uh, a chance to stun with maces. Yeah. So I mean that counteracts that fifteen percent there. Will of the Forsaken. There's nothing you can really do about that. You can't counteract that. I mean, it's just another trinket. Get away from them until it's over with. Tarans, just shoot them in the face. They're big. They're slow. They can't catch you. But, I mean, I, I like the ones that, that we have. Uh, perception. You can 
it's increased stealth detection. Escape artist. You, if you have that, the first thing that you snare me with, I'm getting out of it. And if I can get out of that one, I might be able to get out of your reach entirely to where you can't do it again. Especially if it's escape artist and then blink. Or blink and then you put me in something that I escape artist out, escape artist out of it. Then I'm way ahead of you. So, And then stone form, that's great. It removes any anything. <clears throat> I mean, put anything on them besides a curse and it's gone. Done. And it increases their armor, so... I don't know. Uh, you, I do think it's a problem. You want to know what I think ruined <clears throat> Classic? What's that? Private servers. Well. Everybody's admitting that uh, they were playing private servers to get good at it. So when it came out, they practically had everything on farm, like, quick. There's some guilds that had... Kara and Gruels on farm by the first or second week. They, they're they just farming it now waiting on the next thing to come out. And they'll have yeah, that on farm in no time because they play private servers. And they openly admit that they played private servers to get better to find out how to play, you know, beat all these bosses. And they'll openly admit it. And I'm like, that's, it gets the, you know, well, Blizzard has to put a stop to that. Blizzard has to find those and, and shut them down. I mean, that's... Yeah. I understand private servers. You're always going to have a private server. You're always going to have somebody yeah. that is good enough to write, you know. Because it's, it's, it's just a spaghetti... Uh, it's just a spaghetti code is all it is. Yeah. So people, you know, so people can write it pretty easy. I think that's more or less what ruined it because everybody knows what they're doing. So... Of course, a lot of people already knew from playing the game before, but they, these, say, but they go on these private servers and they can actually play and get really good at this. And then, so when it comes out, boom, you know, they farm. Okay. But are you are you really gonna are you really gonna say that you you need a private server to remember the stuff? I mean, we we know. I know. I, but I, I remember. As I'm as just I I'm, I'm just saying that they can go on private servers and practice and. Oh yeah, hone their skills. Yeah, yeah. hone their skills up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, I completely agree. I completely so agree. When, so when, so uh, when TV, so when, heck, Vanilla came out, a lot of people were saying that they were in private servers before Vanilla came out, so they would know what to do, the quickest way to do it, and everything else to hone their skills. So when Vanilla came out, they knew exactly what to do to get to sixty and how to do all the dungeons and everything. But all you know the what those people are. You know what those people are doing now. They're sitting there twiddling, there. sitting there twiddling yeah. their thumbs because they ain't got nothing better to do. Yeah. Us like me, yeah, I'm taking my time, but you know, I rushed through it the first time when I played. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was in care about like what the second week. It, yeah. it was dumb. I mean, so why, why rush it this time? Enjoy it. I mean, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I, I would love to be seventy. Don't get me wrong, but that's just my thought. Oh, I, no, you're you're. you're you thought spot on with mine. <laughs> I, I agree with that 100%. I don't like private servers. I never have. I've never even touched yeah. a private server. I've, I've never looked at one because I didn't want to. For one, it would be my luck. I would be the one person they caught and they would ban my account forever. Yeah. You know, so. Now, I will admit I logged on to one one time and I was like, what? No, this is too stupid. And I never took. I might have been on for like five minutes. Never signed on to it again. The only, the only private server thing I've ever been on was when another game was out uh, back in the day. They had private servers. I logged on, and you could pretty much say, uh, "Make my character sixty-five. Yeah. Give me the best gear." And it was, you know, you didn't even have to play. All you had to do is go in there and type it. Okay, now you're level that, sixty. That, or you're level that's 65. what this one was, yeah. And that's that's not fun. I mean, why? I, th I thought I, I just I've never understood cheat codes I've never understood using the cheat codes I've, I've never understood wanting to just go to the top right away um, then you're just then you're just out there by yourself it's kind of it's, it's lo it, it is the truth is, the truth is it's lonely at the top I mean because then there's nobody as elite as you are you're that you're that elitist jerk at the top waiting for people to catch up, and then they're not good enough because they don't have the gear you have. Well, 
how are we supposed to have the gear we had when we did the game correctly and didn't go to, you know, private servers and you guys did. So that's my two cents on it. And then of course that's, that's Chris's two cents on it. We're, we're in agreement there with the, the whole private server thing. I totally think it ruined it, but you know what? I'm still going to play. I'm still going to enjoy it. And, uh, that's, yeah, I'm, that's, that's all I'm going to say about it. Cause I can bitch moan about it all night long, but it's not going to get me anywhere with it. So exactly, exactly. That's why I throw my little tamper tantrums and, you know, if yeah. if if one of the if one of the blue devs out there hear it, maybe they'll they'll come, you know, with a comment and you know tell me something, <laughs> anything. I know Say they're trying. I know they're trying. I know they do shut them down when, once they find them. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but it's you. You're never going to be able to catch all of them. Yeah, you know that. I know that. We and all. I mean, gonna, we all know that. And people are playing. They're not going to go say, hey. There's a yeah. server over here. You know, they're not going to do that. And the people that are fighting there's, them are the people that play them. So. There's Discord servers and stuff like that for them. And you, you pop one, they're just going to pop up another one. Yeah. I'm sure they got it copied a million times over. So. But, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it, today I know it was a little bit different. We didn't just go our normal uh, talk about, you know, what we've done and then really nothing else. I wanted to, really I wanted to bring team, you... So. Yeah, I wanted to bring you us, like, talking about the things that are happening in, you know, in Classic, in in Burning Crusade. Um, yeah, that's kind of why we started it anyway, so. Yeah, we've, we've kind of, um, we're going to start narrowing it down now. I've got a little bit more time to where I can actually look things up. Maybe not be in the game, but I can start looking things up, catching stuff when it happens. Uh, you know, jotting a note down about it and then coming with you guys, coming at you guys with it each week. And that's what we want to do. We want to come at you with the news that's happened that week. Um, you know, a couple day, couple days or whatever. I'm sure you guys read the, read the news too, but, uh, that's, that's mainly what we want to do. Kind of bring you that up to date stuff. And then hopefully one of these days I can figure out how to, you know, start doing some podcasts live. We'll get some dates where we can go live. Uh, set it up and we'll we'll start doing some live podcasts maybe I'm gonna try to get some uh, guests in here um, for you know for some uh, that's that's one thing that Chris mentioned to me a while ago was get some guests in here and I just didn't have my head on straight and I couldn't think of anybody uh, now that I've got my head on a little better and I'm starting to know some people maybe I can get some of these bigger names on I'm not gonna name anybody right now but Maybe I can get some of them on. Just some guild, maybe some guild leaders from different. And if you're interested uh, in coming on, then uh, Warcraft yeah. Resurrected at Outlook is our yeah. email. For sure, yeah. If you de definitely, if you're interested in coming on and joining, uh, maybe hitting a podcast with us. Maybe you know, just coming in here to BS and and uh, have a good time. Yeah, you don't have to have a reason to come on here just to talk. You know. It's yeah, just just come hang out with us. I mean, that would be that would be fun. Do a hangout sesh. Yeah. Hell, uh, I don't know if you're four twenty friendly. Come do a hangout sesh with me. <laughs> we'll 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 kick it and have fun together. Right, you got anything else? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it for this uh, go around. I'm gonna start looking right. for next week's and. All right, then I'm gonna talk about a uh, add-on. All right. You talk, have you talked about a tune? Yep. Okay. Talked about the cursive. Alright, if you are rating GTFO. You can just imagine what that means. But if you are standing in the no-no, it tells you get the GTFO. <laughs> yeah, it tells it, you get out of the no-no. It has a alarm will go off saying "did it, did it." That means get out. You're in the you're in the poison cloud. You're in the lava, the fire, or whatever. Um, you're standing where you shouldn't be. Yep. 
Now, it's not going to tell you that you're getting hit by somebody. It's telling you that you're standing in something you shouldn't be standing in. You need to move. Now, does it give you a warning if it's doing like a cone of not, not, not a cone of cold, but, you know, like an area of effect? It, like it gets you, it'll, it'll get you out of any area of effect or it should. Okay. Yeah, like um, Mage's Blizzard, if there's a if there's a NPC doing a blizzard on you, hey, you're in that area of effect. You get need to get out. You need to move. Yeah, and it, if, if you have it set up, you can set it up to flash your screen red telling you you're in it. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty much the same exact thing as Deadly Boss Mods when it tells you to get out. And say your computer or laptop or whatever you got does doesn't is it up to date like it should be and you can't see all the graphics that will help you tell you hey you're in you're in a no-no so if you don't see it because your graphics aren't up to date or whatever then yeah. you know hey i need to move because apparently i'm standing in something i don't see yeah like when i used to have to raid with my head facing the dirt and oh, running dude, with a I running with that. a 250 ping and having GTFO just to know when I'm in something to get out of it. Yeah, yeah I forgot all about that. That was a long time ago. Yeah, that Back was crazy. Yeah, so GTFO, make sure you get that one. That way you know. And uh, that's, all we're, that's the only add-on we're going to talk about. So, uh, we've already talked about our plans. I will, we're both going to be leveling slowly. And uh, try to get up there. I know you're probably some people are listening to podcasts where people are already rating. Hey, we're taking it easy. We're enjoying it. We're still going to bring you the news, and then hopefully once we get up there, we'll start rating. And I think once we get actually get up there and actually get geared and start rating, then uh, we won't look back. No. So it'll be nothing but rating from there, and then we'll have plenty to talk about probably know some people we be able to bring more people on yeah, we talk. haven't joined the guild yet so no i got one in mind i'm kind of looking at but we haven't nothing set in stone yeah. so all right i think that's it for this week unless you got something else uh no i'm good all right well i guess until next week have fun playing the game as always we're going to talk about zegger marsh and slave pins so we're going to start off with Zanger Marsh, the whole area. We're not going to talk about every little detail of, the, of Zanger Marsh, but it is a hauntingly beautiful swamp covered with a forest of giant mushrooms. Though largely teeming with life, sections of the swamp have begun to die as of late, and the sapient fungi of the region seek help in returning it to life. This zone is located in Outland to the west of Hellfire Peninsula. And like Brandon said before, if... Hellfire Peninsula is full and you can, can't can really do anything. Just keep running west and just start in Zinger Marsh if you're 60. Yeah, although I'm sure from what I've read from different people, they had the same idea and I'm sure Zinger Marsh and Hellfire Peninsula both are going to be just jam-packed. It's just going to be more or less pick your poison as to which one you want to do. Yep. Let's see. Now, can you still play, like, in the high-level zones in vanilla and maybe get some of the XP, or you ha more or less you need to go to Hellfire? You can still, even at 60, you can still go over to, like, um, is it Eastern Plaguelands, I do believe? I think, I think so. Eastern, I think Eastern or Western, one of the two, um, still has stuff that you can do at 60 that would still get you XP. Um... There's still there's still quite a few zones. There's still some zones in vanilla that you could get XP from uh, if you wanted to go and do those quests. Because I know you don't finish all the quests to get the 60. So I would say the Plaguelands, um, there's some stuff in those areas that you could probably do. And what is it, Winter Spring? I think... Yeah. I think you might get be able to get some experience in winter spring as well. So if you don't want to, if you didn't want to go straight to TBC, you don't have to, as far as leveling once you're 60. But most people are going to want to do that. Eastern Plainlands is 55 to 60. Okay. 
and then winter spring is 55 to 60 also yeah and then silicis is also 55 to 60. yeah you can hit those um and do it um because i mean believe it before before tbc's out guys i'm going to have a guide that's going to tell you exactly what you can do if you have a five-man group it's going to tell you exactly what you can do the dungeon you can run to where you'll be exalted with all the factions and you'll be uh You'll be care attuned or or one or two steps away from it, and you'll be uh, able to do heroic dungeons. I think there's 16 new dungeons, and I think you'll have the 13 out of the 16. The only ones you won't be able to do are the the ones like Architrast because you have to fly to those. Yeah. So uh, those you'll have to be you'll have to be 70, and you'll have. Well, to have I thought there was a place it, to port to on the side. Did you talk no. to a guy and like he? I, I don't know why I was thinking. He might, that. he might. They may port you one time, but I don't even I, think they do it that. I I do believe the only way that I was able to get up there the very first time before I had a mount was we had a warlock go up on the um, Architraz deal, and he ended up summoning me up there so I could get up there with the guys to do it. Oh, I remember you telling me about that. So yeah. I think you're right. So That's you right. have to have flying in order to get it, or you have to have somebody summon you up there, which you can also have somebody summon you to Outlands if you're not 58. Just a FYI, but you'll get killed by the first board you see. <laughs> yeah, I'm just letting you know now. You don't want to go hit 58 unless you're 60. Or you don't want to hit uh, any any of these places like Zanger Marsh, especially until you're 60, because Zanger Marsh is higher than. Hellfire Peninsula. Oh, yeah. But some of the... Let's see here. Zanger Marsh uh, consists of a large expanse of swampland bordered by mountains to the north, south, and to some extent the east. A long stretch of coastline forms the western edge of the zone. Giant mushrooms are characteristic features of the area towering above the pools of marsh water like great trees. Zanger Marsh contains four instances, which we're going to talk about. Um, well, we're going to talk about three of them. One of them is a 25-man raid. They're all located in Coolfang Reservoir. This area has no um, this area has no battlegrounds or micro dungeons, but it does have some world PvP dungeons or world PvP um, areas. And there's a graveyard nearest to the Cool Coolfang Reservoir entry. That's the PvP zone for, uh, for a graveyard. Let's see. As of, I don't know if they're going to now, I don't know if they're going to put this in or not, because this was in a patch uh, from back in vanilla. But the Alliance, uh, the graveyard only works for the Slave Pins instances, as the distance to yeah. instance portals is used instead of the distance to the Cool Fang entry. So, I don't know if that'll be uh, right away or not, but if it is, if you're an alliance, the only graveyard the, the the graveyard only works for the slave pins. Otherwise, you're going to go back to the uh, the the zone graveyard, and you'll have to run from there. But either way, it's not very long, and Cool Frank Reservoir is right in the middle, so you'll be able to find it pretty easy. Getting to there from Hellfire Peninsula uh, for alliance. You'll have to go from. If you go from the Temple of Tel Hamat in East in uh, Hellfire Peninsula. You'll have you'll head south to the main road through the zone, and you'll follow the road west into Zanger Marsh. It's really easy to find. For Horde, you'll go from Falcon Watch in Hellfire Peninsula. You'll head north to the main road through the zone, and follow the road west into Zanger Marsh. So if you're both running together, you might Horde and Alliance might end up on the same road running there, but. Okay. Just don't mess with them and just go straight to the zone. I think the... I don't know. As far as Zanger Marsh itself, I like it just... Uh, I like some of the lore of it, but mainly I like it just because of how it looks. It's all mushroomy and um, kind of swampy. You you don't run through... A hard, like, as a gnome, you'll have to do some swimming, but other than that, um, anybody else can should be able to just run through it and there shouldn't be a problem. Just remember when you're fighting Nagas, they are humanoids, so when they get low on health, they will 
run away and try to get other people to come help them. So you have a potential yeah. aggro other mobs. So just be careful around them because there's Naga everywhere. Yeah. Now there's Those, a, a the broken. There's also in there. Uh, the, just remember, it's also they have a world PVP, really small, smaller than the uh, Hellfire Peninsula has. Uh, the Twin Spire Ruins, capture the two beacons of Twin Spire Ruins. Objectives, obtain a flag from Alliance Field Scout or the Hordes Field Scout to capture the graveyard and gain the Twin Spire Blessing buff in the zone for your faction. You can also obtain Mark of Honor Hold or Mark of Thrallmar for PvP kill blows in this zone, which can be used at the at vendors. Yeah. Um, it's a 5% damage increase. Um, if you have the the PvP zones, it's a five percent damage increase. While you're inside of Zanger Marsh or any of the, I want to say any of the dungeons inside Zanger Marsh. Yeah. And Zanger Marsh has access to Hellfire, Terracar Forest, the Grand, and Blake Edge Mountains are around them. They're adjacent. Yeah, Blake Edge right? Mountains. Blake Edge Mountains are pretty high though. You yeah. don't want to go into Yeah, you do those. not want to go there. That's I think that's the highest level or no way, but there's one more, isn't there? I can't remember. No, I think that is the highest yeah, that one. Yeah, that is the that highest is one. That is the highest, highest one. Over here. Yeah, because that's sixty five to sixty eight. And uh yeah. yeah. So that's it for Zanger Mars. We'll move on to the first dungeon instance and that's the slave pins. Yeah. Let's see, the Slave Fiends is the first five-man wing within Coolfang Reservoir. The instance is harder than both the Blood Furnace and Hellfire Ramparts, but the loot drops are of much greater quality. Uh, some of the noted things that, that will come out later in the patch is uh, they do a Midsummer Fire Festival. And there'll be a new boss in the slave pen called Lord of Hoon. Yeah. That won't happen until later. Just kind of giving you guys a heads up on it. Yeah, because I Let's think see. it just went on in game. One of the little festivals. Yeah, we just had the. We just had one of the. I think I don't know if it was the Midsummer yeah, Fire Festival. Yeah, I don't think it was. I, I, can't, I can't remember which one it was. Had the elders and stuff like that in there. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying. I'm just kind of going through You'll here. You'll get so you know, Scenarian Expedition Reputation through Friendly and then through Exalted on Heroic. Yeah. Now, I don't remember what the average run on uh, Normal is, but Heroic will roughly give you about 1850 rep. Uh, I want to say, I I haven't looked at my little things, so I want to say it's, uh... Around a thousand, a little over a thousand. That's what I was thinking you said last time. So. But it's, I'm just looking through here to find out if there's any other things that kind of, uh, that I kind of wanted, to, I would love, I would want to point out, but I don't see anything else in here. Yeah. Now, to get, I mean, you got to swim down in Cool Fang Reservoir. You have to swim down in order to get to these places. And I can't yeah. remember. So in the middle of the lake, uh, you'll see like a, a building type of thing in the middle. And right in the middle of that, you swim down and you'll see a pipe. You swim down there and get, swim to the side and you go up a little bit and there you go. That's right. That's right. Okay. Let's now see. when you go in here, normal mode, I believe mobs hit between two to three hundred normal hits. So if you're a tank, make sure you can take those hits. Yeah. So that just kind of gives you an idea. Now, I forgot to mention... What level is this? I this zone... This zone is... Oh, okay. The bosses in it are... Uh, 70 like 72 elites so you're looking at probably around 64 62 to 64 is what it's yeah. the level range is that now that doesn't mean you can't you know uh can't go under later it's just said to get really good uh experience points and stuff like that it just suggests 62 to 64 and at approximate 
time is about one to two hours long. I'm going to talk about Menu the Betrayer. Now, after betraying his kind to the Naga under Lady Vash's rule, Menu the Betrayer and many fo fellow broken subordinates now guard the slave pens in the Colfane Reservoir. Now, it's likely that many of the broken found in cages throughout Colfane Reservoir are there because of Menu's treachery. Now, he is an example of a broker who has found a way to turn Illidan's reign of terror to their advantage. By betraying his fellow Janai, he gained favor with his Naga overlords. Now, his betrayal has tainted his shaman training, and he now wields corrupted totems, which make him a formidable opponent for any group. So, he's the first of three bosses. He's got 77,000 health. He's got about 6,700 mana. And then his spells and abilities, he's got Menu's Healing Ward. And his uh, heals Menu for 1% of his total life every second. So it might not sound like much, but it is if it keeps ticking and keeps ticking and keeps ticking and keeps ticking. It could add up. Uh, tainted Earth Grab Totem, periodically cast an AoE and tangling roots. Causes very low, 72 a tick on heroic, but we don't, and uh, damage and has a relatively small range. Tainted Stone Skin's Totem gives Munu a large boost in armor, reducing damage from melee. Corrupted Nova Totem explodes after 5 seconds for around 2,500 fire damage to everyone in the 10 yard radius of the totem. So if you can get it down, get it down. Now, yeah, is also lightning bolt deals 1000 to 1600 nature damage cast only on the character who currently has aggro and is uninterruptible so if he starts casting lightning bolt you can't interrupt it so don't worry, even worry about stopping it now fighting him is endurance test he has 60,000 hit points and healing abilities but doesn't put out a lot of damage it is, however, critical because totems be killed relatively quickly. So, kind of assign somebody on totems. Get somebody that does some good DPS, probably. No, uh, they can be. I think they can be taken down with any level one spell. Okay. They're just. Uh, they they just they go down really really quick. Okay. Uh, now, now he passes up and down a ramp, which you use to get Rockmar the Crackler. The mobs at the bottom of the ramp pull in two separate groups. So neither of them must be pulled to kill the boss. Menu can be pulled at range as he is going up the ramp and he will not aggro the groups at the base of the ramp. After he's dead, these groups can be avoided by going around behind the ramp to the other side and up the ramp. Now, lower level characters may aggro these mobs after the boss is defeated when mounting the ramp. Healers should not have any trouble healing through damage. An excellent strategy to have the tank walk backwards in a large circle while keeping aggro on Menu. This will ensure that he is out of range of his totems most of the time. Now, note that hitting his corrupted Nova totem will cause it to go off instantly, so avoid shooting it whenever possible. Any class can one-shot the totems, like you said, so even the healer can deal with most of them via wanding. Simple melee damage or rank one Urshock Moonfire. Now, Grounding Toe will absorb lightning bolts, and warriors can use spell reflection on them. And that's it. So, in uh, normal, he drops some cloth legs called Princely Rain Leggings. It's got 18 stamina, 28 intellect, 12 spirit. And uh, you got to be 62 to equip all of these. And if you equip it, it's got a hit rating of 18 and it increases spell power by 33. And then there's a main hand sword called Spellfire Longsword. It's got 15 stamina, 14 intellect. If you equip it, it improves hit rating by 10 and increases spell power by 56. Okay, and then it drops a male waist piece called Tracker's Belt. If you put it on it's got 21 agility 21 stamina and when it's equipped it improves hit rating by 14 it improves critical strike rating by 21 and increases attack power by 42 
male chess piece called Best of Living Lightning. It's got 12 stamina, 15 intellect. It's got a red, blue, and yellow socket. And there's a socket bonus with a plus 5 to spell power. And if you equip it, it increases spell power by 18 and restores 6 mana per 5 seconds. And then a one-handed dagger called Waste Walker Shiv. It's got 12 stamina. And if you equip it, it improves hit rate by 12 and increases attack power by 28. And then also, for you leather workers, drops a pattern called Nature Armor Kit. And... It's one charge. It's really course. good. Yeah. It's it's a good armor kit. Right. Now it's your turn. All right, and that was menu. And then you'll, I think, after menu menu, you go up. There's a there's a ramp. You go up. You kill some guys up there. It's not too far away. Um, Pretty much after you go through, there's a room that you come into after you kill him. Uh, you'll kill some guys and hit, and uh, right around that area is Rockmore the Crackler. He is a uh, bog struck, a very giant bog struck. Yeah. Um, he looks like he's got anywhere from, looks like he's got like 96,000 health. Uh, anywhere from 96,000 to 168,000. I think 168,000 is on heroic. Yeah. Rockmore the Crackler is the lord of the Zanger Marsh box truck. Resides in the slave pens. Somehow Rogmar has grown to insane proportions for a box truck. The Naga have somehow subjugated him into protecting their subterranean domain, or perhaps they have simply allowed him to remain in sight in his notorious rage on intruders. If threatened, he will in, he will engage and kill any creature that does not belong in his domain by using his tearing claws and water blasting abilities. He has a few abilities. He has Grievous Wound. Um, it's a bleed debuff. It causes the target to bleed for 900 physical damage every two seconds until the player with the debuff has been healed to full health. Divine Shield and Stone Form will remove this. Uh, it's not a, it's it's a, the debuff is not timed. And it will last until you are dead or you're cured. Like it says, the only way to cure it is to heal the character to full health. Once the character hits full health, that debuff will drop off. Water Spit, AOE, deals 16 to 1800 frost damage to nearby targets. Frost resist would be useful, and it saves the healers on mana, but it's not, uh, it's not, you don't have to have it, it's not necessary. Um,. The healer will. If you can't. The healer can't aggro this guy easily. Um, so you, the healer shouldn't have to worry about it. His range. The range of this is like 40 yards. So hunters and mages can stay out of range, uh, depending on their spec, and should be able to hit him. He also cast cast ensnaring moss, increases attack speed and casting time by 50 percent. The range is about 30 yards. If you're healing, be sure to get out of this. Um. It's sure to wipe the group if the healer gets hit with this because it does increase casting time by 50%. And you have to keep your tank topped off, and you have to especially keep people topped off if they get that debuff. He only enrages in heroic, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, one of the strategy uh, strategy of it is uh, just take your time. It's really easy. If a tank loses aggro, you'll be in trouble when he... When he enrages you, must lay down heavy heals. That's only in heroic, so um, you don't have to worry about that. To save everyone, if the tank is dead and Rockmore is nowhere near dying, all your remaining group members can jump into the pools of water. Um, Rockmore's gigantic, but he can't swim. He's a gigantic prawn, but he can't swim. So when you jump into the water, you'll exit combat mode. In a, a, that moment, Rockmore will go back to patrolling. Um... Just get out of his get out of the range of his water spit. If you do, if you make it near the ramp, uh, you'll be far enough away. Note that if you jump into the western pool, you'll have to walk the long way around to return to Rockmore. So try to jump into the southeastern pools. Uh, the water spit attack. Rockmore occasionally attacks with water spit. The attack is an AOE frost based attack, so frost resist of any kind is good. Uh, Paladins can put up the frost resistance aura. 
Um, healers, there's a heal, there's a way for healers to escape this attack if the tank positions himself so that he is between Rockmore and the healer. The 40 yard range of the healer will place them just outside of the 40 yard range of water spit. So it'll save mana that the healers would otherwise have to use on themselves. Um, everyone else should hang in a fairly close to hang in fairly close to the tank so they can be in range of the healers. Don't be afraid. Interrupts such as silence, earth shock, kick, war stomp, and shield bash do not work. Uh, heal yourself with bandages if you have to after he hits you with the water spit, just to help healers with uh, mana. All right. His most devastating attack is a bleed effect, which will increase the uh, already tremendous amount of damage per second over time. That's called the grievous wound attack. We talked about it earlier. Um, it's it, it, what it is. Like I said, it just it just ticks until you heal the person to full. Uh, this fight is a cakewalk with two good healers, as a shaman and a, dru a druid or priest work well, very well together, because uh, they can keep the tank from bleeding out with single healing cast. With with a single healing class, it's easy to run out of mana trying to keep up with the bleed for this reason. That's why having two uh, healer and an off healer is good. Keeping the tank health high. And immediately healing to full when the bleed hits is advisable, though not always possible. Um, so it's really, I mean, it's pretty easy. Dwarven stone skin will take you, or stone form will take you out of it. Yeah. But that's a two-minute uh, cooldown, so uh, watch for that. It, and like I mentioned, if uh, anybody can throw your bandage on yourself and help with heals, that helps as well. Um, beating him is pretty easy, and after you beat him, he does have some drops. Uh, he has a bog scale, bog strock scale cloak. Um, everything that I'm going to tell you is a level 62 to use. So, but he has a bog scale, a bog strock scale cloak. It has uh, 271 armor, 22 stamina, increases defense rating by 16. Calming spore reed, um, which is a wand. It is um, 97 damage per second, and it's frost damage if anybody cares. It's 8 intellect, 9 spirit. It increases spell power by 11. He drops the Cool Thing Hammer of Renewal. It is a main hand mace, 41.42 um, 40, damage per second. 10 stamina, 13 intellect, 12 spirit. And it increases spell power by 56. And then you have the Cool Thing Needler. It is a crossbow, 72.1 damage per second. Has 12 agility, 17 stamina, and increases attack power by 22. And then he has the Ruined Fungal Cap, which is a trinket. Now, being called a Ruined Fungal Cap is weird. I figured it would be a helmet, but yeah. it's a trinket. Uh, improves resilience rating by 30. And if you use it, it has absorbs 440 damage in the last 20 seconds. Resilience rating to me was a PvP skill, yeah, but I think they thing. changed it. I, I don't think they ever changed it. I think people just got this mainly for the uh, click effect, which absorbs 440 damage. So, but that's uh, that's his drops on uh, regular, and um, he's pretty easy. Not too bad. He's really big, has quite a few hit points. But if you have the decent healers. They won't have a problem healing you through. And then, uh, once you get through him, you keep on trucking. You'll eventually get to the third and the final boss of Slave Spend called Quagmire. Now, I keep thinking Quagmire every time I see this name. <laughs> yeah, no. So, Giggity Giggity is the last boss. Yeah. All right. So, now, he's a fungal giant, so he's going to be big. And he's an ancient bog lord who has presumably resided for a great length of time within the natural cave system that the Kulfang Naga appropriated as their domain. Now, it is unknown whether he is controlled by the Naga. So, he's got about 100,000 health to 180,000 health. Yeah, that's probably, you know, normal and heroic. Yeah, normal and heroic. And, uh... Now, his abilities, Acid Geyser, Quagmarin selects one random party member and initiates a channeled code AOE nature damage attack in the direction of that party member. 
during the acid geyser, the tank may taunt Quigmaril to force the boss to force the attack on him for the duration of the taunt debuff. But Quagmaril will turn back to his original target when the debuff ends if the acid geyser timer has not yet finished. After the channel is done, Quagmaril will run after the party member he was targeting, ignoring the tank. It is not clear if this is a complete aggro wipe. And then he also has a Poison Bolt Volley. Standard AoE Poison Bolt Volley hitting for 2.5k da nature damage with added Dispel Poison Dot. So, one of the strategies prior to engaging this boss, remember to unlock and free Naturalist Bite if you have the quest. When you free him, three Naga will spawn. Make sure you are ready for him. After free him, you can talk to him and he will buff you with a 30 minute Walk of the Bite which grants you 110 nature resistance and plus 5% of all stats. This will help with the Poison Dot and his AoE as they both are nature based. And this, uh, this guy is down in the water. What people normally do is they'll, somebody will go, they'll like to take, will go attack him and pull him out of the water. Usually I think the tank might, might even walk around the edge and pull him that way, but uh, yeah. But anyways, yeah. Uh, nature resist tunnel or stack with the mark of the bite buff and should be used if available. Hunter's turtle aspect of wild shamans drop nature resist totems. Aspect of wild and nature resist totems do not stack. However, the fight is primarily a take and spake fight with healers concentrating on healing the tank and cleansing the dot from the poison bolt volley. So just. Fight him. Put if you are one of those classes, throw those out. Just remember, like I said, the uh, aspect of wild nature resistance tones do not stack. So if you got one or both, or if you got one or the other, make sure you do it. But if you got both, you, there's no reason to do both. All right, now after uh, you down him, all the normal drops are level 62 to equip them. First one is a plate legs called. As your plate grieves, it's a 33 strength, 27 stamina, and 26 intellect. If you equip it, it restores 6 mana per 5 seconds. Leather hands called Deft Hand Guards. It's got 18 stamina. It's got a blue and a yellow socket. And if you socket them both properly, it's got plus 3 hit rating. If you equip it, it improves critical strike rating by 12 and increases attack power by 52. Male shoulders called Scorpion Steg Mantle. It's got 21 agility and 12 stamina. It's got a red and blue socket. A socket bonus of plus 3 intellect. And after you equip it, it increases attack power by 30. And it restores 6 mana per 5 seconds. And then it's got a back piece with 15 stamina and, 11, and 15 intellect. If you equip it, it improves your critical strike rating by 11. And increases spell power by 19. And then the plate chest piece. 26 strength, 21 agility, and 23 stamina. Two red sockets and a blue socket. It was a socket bonus of plus four to defense rating. And that's it. Yeah, this boss is pretty easy. Um, I don't ever remember this boss being hard, so. One, uh, of the, one of the strategies that works really well, too, is if you have people who are competent and uh, you can get up, actually stack up close to him, and when he turns around to do his cone ability on one of your characters, if you just run through him, it won't hit anybody. And okay. then just run around and run back behind him again when the tank turns him around away from the the group. Yeah. Because if you stand, if the people stand out everywhere and you're all spread out, and if he goes to hit one person with it, you, you can't, you know, you know, and it's going to hit everybody else. But if you stay stacked up, when he turns around to do the cone, just run through him, and then you're on the back side of him, and then it's not hitting anybody. Cool. Um, if you want to hear us do anything about the heroic side, let us know. Um, drop us a line in the uh, the comments or uh, anything like that. Um, if you do a review on on the uh, <laughs> podcast, go ahead and just let us know that you want us to uh, that you want us to um, do the heroic version, and then we'll do it. And we do have a, 
links on Warcraft Radio that uh, they put a lot of the World of Warcraft Blizzard uh, podcast on there. Please, uh, if you'd like, go give us a review on there also. And we would greatly appreciate it. Give us a review on like iTunes and stuff like that. If, if We would greatly appreciate that. Oh, yeah. And uh, if you think of anything else you want us to talk about, want us to bring up during the podcast, uh, we're about to do, a, if we know anything news-wise, we'll do that here in a second. But we want your ideas of what you want to hear. Yes, let us know anything that you want to hear about. And uh, we will, if you have any questions or anything like that, I or Chris will do the research on it and we can get back with you. Uh, we'll do a whole podcast about it if we think that it's long enough. Next week we'll be talking about the Underbog and the Steam Vault. Yeah, those are fun. Yeah, so stay tuned for that and uh, have fun playing games. As always. If you would like to get a hold of us, you can email us at wowresurrected at outlook.com. This show is brought to you by Heartland Production Entertainment. If you'd like to help to make the show better, go to patreon.com slash heartlandpae.